A Brief History of Planet Earth Most of us have a difficult time understanding very large numbers. We can easily visualize a hundred coins, but visualizing a thousand coins begins to get difficult. Visualizing one million coins is something most of us can't do. What about one billion coins? How much would they weigh? How long would it take you to count to one billion? One American penny weighs 2.5 grams. 1,000 pennies weigh 2.5 kilograms. Two million pennies weigh 5,000 kilograms, about the same as an average elephant. The Earth is 4.5 billion years old. That many pennies would weigh about the same as 2,500 elephants. This pyramid is made of 287,820 pennies. Each of its sides is about one meter long, and it weighs about 72 kilograms. It would take 31.7 years for this clock to sweep through one billion seconds. In order to comprehend the history of life, we have to try to think on the scale of billions of years. This scale is called deep time. This represents the history of the Earth on a clock face, on which five billion years ago is midnight, so right here on the clock face, and noon is now, 12 hours later, so all the way around the clock once. The Earth was created about 4.54 billion years ago at 1.08 a.m. on the clock, so that's right here. Prokaryotes showed up at around 4.2 billion years ago, or 2.56 a.m., so we're over here now, Single-cell eukaryotes at 2.2 billion years ago, right over here at 7.01 a.m. Humanity finally appeared at a couple of seconds before noon, way up here. This is a timeline of major events in the history of Earth. The scale is 4,540 million years, or 4.54 billion years. Descriptions of major milestones follow on the next pages. Scientists speculate about what Earth was like when it first formed. We know that it was very hot, there was a lot of volcanic activity, and there was no oxygen. As the planet cooled, water vapor condensed and it rained for 100,000 years, forming the oceans. Other theories suggest that the water came from outside the Earth, as discussed in the earlier Origins of Life chapter. Hydrothermal vents on the floor of the ocean released heat, gases, and catalysts, creating an environment that could support life. Organic molecules made of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and phosphorus, such as nucleotides and amino acids, formed spontaneously. Some nucleic acids expanded because they were enzymes that could replicate themselves. Metabolic reactions inside enclosures of lipid or protein formed the first reproducing systems, the first cells. These single-celled organisms obtained carbon and energy by consuming them from the environment. They were the first consumers. 3.5 billion years ago, the first photosynthetic cells appeared. These cells gathered energy from the sun's visible light waves rather than chemicals from hydrothermal vents. These cells released oxygen as a byproduct of photosynthesis. 2.9 billion years ago, the first cells that could use oxygen for aerobic respiration emerged. Aerobic respiration produces much more ATP than anaerobic respiration and was a survival advantage. The Earth's flow of energy and matter between consumers, producers, decomposers, the atmosphere, and the Earth was established. Photosynthetic cells multiplied. They produced oxygen and captured carbon dioxide, causing major changes on Earth. Then and now, changes in atmospheric gases caused changes in Earth's temperature. As carbon dioxide levels decreased, temperatures fell and glaciers covered more of the Earth. Oxygen interacted with rocks and released minerals into the oceans. And oxygen was toxic to many organisms that had lived in oxygen-free environments. 2.6 to 2.3 billion years ago. 
As single-celled photosynthetic organisms filled the oceans, oxygen increased and global temperatures fell. The oxygen crisis resulted in much of the Earth being covered in ice and the mass extinction of many prokaryotic organisms. The mass extinction occurred because any species that could not tolerate oxygen, cooler temperatures, or the new mineral content died off. 2.2 billion years ago, the next great transformation was the emergence of eukaryotes, as explained by the endosymbiosis hypothesis. Eukaryotes had specialized organelles that improved their efficiency. They were able to grow larger than their prokaryotic ancestors. 1.5 to 1.0 billion years ago, simple multicellular life forms appeared. Cells grew in colonies and cooperated with one another. As cells within colonies developed specialized functions, multicellular life forms emerged. Their survival advantage was specialization of cells and tissues, a division of labor. One specialized function that emerged was sexual reproduction. This key advantage gives rise to genetically unique offspring in highly variable populations. Variation in populations is an advantage because it increases the chances that some individuals will survive when the environment changes. 542 million years ago, the Cambrian Explosion. The Cambrian Explosion occurred during the Cambrian period from 542 to 485 million years ago. Explosion is an appropriate term because fossils from this time period tell us that biodiversity exploded. It increased dramatically during this period. The Burgess Shale fossils in Canada provide strong evidence for this event. The ancestors of most modern animals appeared at that time. Life evolved rapidly from simple to complex, very weird organisms. Features of Precambrian animals. Simple, composed of very few tissue types. Most were soft bodied, leaving few fossils. Features of Cambrian and modern animals. Many tissue types, bilateral symmetry, right and left sides, a head and a tail, endoskeletons on the inside like ours, or exoskeletons on the outside like a crab's. What events led to the explosion of biodiversity? There are many possible causes of the rapid increase in biodiversity. Climate change. Did temperature or oxygen levels change? Atmospheric oxygen was increasing at this time. Genetic changes. Did new mutations allow rapid genetic change? The appearance of new genes coded modern body types. Ecological changes. Did the appearance of new decomposers or predators change community interactions? New ecosystems were forming. 450 million years ago, colonization of land. The Cambrian explosion gave rise only to marine life. Animals colonized land later, almost one million years later. Fossils show that plants colonized land before animals, which makes sense because they are producers. Terrestrial ecosystems depend on producers to capture energy. The ancestors of millipedes were early colonizers. They were primary consumers and detritivores, decomposers who eat dead plants. Biodiversity increased as new species filled all the available niches on land. 250 million years ago, Permian-Triassic mass extinction. The Permian-Triassic mass extinction the greatest extinction in Earth's history destroyed 95% of marine life and 70% of land life. It occurred over a period of 200,000 years, or 15 million years. Scientists are not sure. It is theorized that it could have been caused by meteor strikes, volcanic explosions, increased levels of methane, or the shifting of tectonic plates. Most of Earth's species could not tolerate the climate change from whatever caused it. The disappearance of land animals like those pictured here left available niches for the rise of new species, the dinosaurs. 230 million years ago, after the mass extinction, the age of the dinosaurs lasted for 165 million years. By comparison, 
modern humans have existed for only 200,000 years. Dinosaurs lived 825 times as long as humans have lived so far. 230 to 65 million years ago, the age of the dinosaurs. Paleontologists are scientists who study fossils. Dinosaur fossils give us a record of the types of dinosaurs at different times during their 165 million year existence. Dinosaurs were a diverse class of reptiles that filled many terrestrial and marine niches. Click on Dinosaur Diversity to explore the many different types of dinosaurs and when and how they lived. From the early Jurassic to the late Cretaceous period, the number of different dinosaur body types increased. Biodiversity increased. Evidence suggests that the extinction of the dinosaurs was caused by rapid, massive climate change brought on by an asteroid impact 65 million years ago. The Gulf of Mexico is thought to be a giant crater caused by the impact. Only one group of dinosaurs survived the extinction, the birds. The chart moves forward in time from the bottom to the top. New research indicates that many of the dinosaurs were feathered. 65 million years ago, the rise of the mammals. Just as the Permian-Triassic extinction cleared niches for the expansion of dinosaurs, the extinction of dinosaurs cleared niches for the rise of mammals. Mammals have endoskeletons, have hair or fur, nurse young with milk, and are warm-blooded. While dinosaurs were the largest creatures on the Earth until 65 million years ago, mammals fill that role now and inhabit diverse niches. Seven million years ago to the present, the age of hominins. Hominins are human-like species. There are known to have been at least 20 hominin species. At least half of them have been found in the last 30 years based on fossil discoveries, and more continue to be found. All hominins walked on two legs and had opposable thumbs that were adapted for grabbing and holding. All except one, humanity, are extinct. Archaeologists are scientists who study human fossils and ancient artifacts. 300,000 to 100,000 years ago, the rise of humans. The first Homo sapiens lived about 100,000 years ago. Though 200,000 to 300,000 years ago, there were hominins who looked like us. Homo heidelbergensis was a hominin species that gave rise to modern humans. They lived in Africa, Europe, and Western Asia 600,000 to 200,000 years ago. Modern humans, Homo sapiens, are at the top of this chart. Some ancient hominin species could interbreed and have fertile offspring. Humans survived where the other hominin species didn't because humans have much bigger brains, leading to complex tool use, language, complex social structures, counting, and complex hunting techniques. Human males and females are about the same size. This leads to reduced competition for mates between males and more cooperation in societies. Extended childhoods and shared childcare allow more time to grow and learn complex behaviors, and increased manual dexterity. We are good with our hands. Mass extinctions make room for new species and are followed by increases in biodiversity. Biodiversity and complexity tend to increase over time, but are accelerated dramatically by mass extinctions. Extinctions have been caused by abiotic and biotic factors, including volcanic eruptions, temperature changes, asteroid impacts, changes in oxygen levels, changes in carbon dioxide levels, and changes in ocean minerals. The environment has shaped life through changes in the composition of the atmosphere and oceans. Also, through cataclysmic events like asteroid strikes and volcanic activity. Life has shaped the environment, for example, the oxygen crisis, and current global climate change. This two-way process has and will continue to change the biosphere, but the biosphere typically changes over many millions of years.